Hello everyone. Um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about methylation and the MTHFR gene. My name is Dr. Aubrey Tager and I'm a chiropractor focusing on neurometabolic conditions and I practice in the state of Vermont. Now I am board certified in integrative medicine and board eligible chiropractic neurologist. I sit on the executive board of the American Association of Integrative Medicine and I have just finished up um, my first book that will be published in the fall on autoimmune conditions. My practice focuses mainly on autoimmune conditions and neurometabolic disorders. Now the reason why we want to talk about the MTHFR gene is because it is of vital importance for people that are suffering from chronic condition. In 2003, a genetic study called the Human Genome Project was completed and through that study they discovered an important gene that affects the health and well-being called methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. Now the reason why we don't run around saying that word is because it's really difficult to uh, call it methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase therefore it has been shortened to MTHFR. So this MTHFR gene they have found that it was defective in a lot of chronic health care sufferers. Now, we need methylation for certain processes. We need it for DNA and RNA synthesis. We need it for turning on and off genes. We also need it for brain chemical productions. So things that are gonna regulate our moods, such as dopamine and serotonin. We also need it for the breakdown of hormones, such as estrogen and testosterone. We also need it for the creation of immune cells, such as natural killer cells and T cells and for the creation of the outer protective covering of our nerves, which is called the myelin sheath. Methylation is also vital in the processing of toxins or in eliminating those toxins, which we call detoxification. Now, what can happen if these problems go uncorrected? Well, some examples are autoimmune conditions. It could be conditions such as diabetes, thyroid problems, multiple sclerosis, Sjogren's disease, Raynaud's phenomenon, and other autoimmune conditions such as fibromyalgia. You might also see this in auto, in auto uh, autism spectrum disorders such as autism, dyslexia, ADD and ADHD, as well as cancer, heart disease, anxiety and depression, and many hormone imbalances. So what a healthy MTHFR gene does for you when it's all working right, it begins a multiple um, chemical breakdown process called methylation. In, in, in a way to simplify this, what we can do is we actually say that this MTHFR gene produces what's called an MTHFR enzyme. This enzyme works with folate, certain vitamins such as B9, folic acid, breaking it down from 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate to 5-methylene hydrofolate. That's the more usable form. So this entire process of MTHFR goes is what's called methylation. And what we see here is the actual methylation process. So this starts off with, a, with methionine, and methionine as it converts and goes through this entire wheel here, the finished product we see is homocysteine, which eventually gets broken down into glutathione. Glutathione is the number one antioxidant that we have in our body. So if we have a difficult process going through this entire system here, then we're not going to be able to produce enough glutathione. And if we don't have enough glutathione, then we're not going to be able to get rid of the healthcare problems that we have because that is our body's defense system. That is our number one antioxidant in our body. And if we're depleted of that glutathione, then we're not going to be able to fight off a lot of these problems. What we have here are three different processes that are going on. All three of them are going concurrently. So we've got to make sure that each one of these is functioning properly through this MTHFR pathway in order for this entire methylation process to be working. Now, if you have a defective MTHFR gene, then it's going to come in different varieties. So what ends up happening is you're not functioning anymore at 70 or 80%. You might only be functioning at 40% of its capacity. So this means that 
you're going to have problems with heavy metals. Heavy metal toxicity is going to cause the depletion of your iron stores in your body. So if you can have, you could end up having problems with uh, an excess of copper or mercury and this can cause your iron levels to go down. Now this defective enzyme doesn't break down folate vitamins properly, of which folic acid is the precursor, and this can cause a high level of homocysteine. And if you have a high, low, high level of homocysteine that's not able to get converted down into glutathione, what ends up happening is you put yourself at risk for certain problems, specifically coronary artery diseases, vascular diseases. You're going to see this a lot when you go to your family doctor and they order labs and they're going to look at those homocysteine levels. If those homocysteine levels are high, then that really is going to be a precursor to heart diseases and we want to make sure that we keep that in check. So when homocysteine is poorly converted into glutathione, which is your natural antioxidants, you are then going to be more susceptible to all of these problems. Now you can find yourself with high folate or high B12. Your body will also have problems converting uh, inactive forms of folate and B12 to the active forms. Everything that we do in our body is not always in the most usable form. We've got to make sure that we go through this process in order to make sure that we can use it properly. So the inactive form of folate or B12 will simply build up in the serum part of your blood and that's going to inhibit or block the active forms. Most serum folate tests are actually measuring folic acid which needs to be converted to methylfolate and used in order to be used metabolically. Now the Journal of Molecular Psychiatry states that schizophrenia-like syndromes, bi bipolar disorder, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and other vascular types of dementia have all been associated with one or more mutations of this MTHFR genes. These genes are passed down from the mother and the father. They're inherited. They're pushed on through the families. Now most literature states that there are 50 different types of mutations of these genes. It can be passed down by one or the other or both. So we have a bunch of different varieties or variations. First what we have is what's called homozygous. Then we're also going to have heterozygous, we're going to have compound heterozygous, and triple homozygous. All this would be broken down and explained to you if, in fact, you did have a problem with that MTHFR gene. Now, just because you do have a defect with an MTHFR gene, that doesn't mean you're going to have all these problems. But what it does is it tells you that you now are susceptible to these. Once this gene is turned on, then you're going to put yourself at risk for all of these different types of problems. High copper and low zinc, this can be a common finding when you do have this MTHFR defect. A high level of the neurotransmitter copper which will also conversely mean that these zinc levels will fall and this is going to be a problem because what ends up happening is if your zinc levels fall or if they get depleted then your body starts to leach on to different metals it tries to fill that void of zinc and the way that it does that is it's going to pull it in from the air um, let's say that you're around smokers a lot it'll pull cadmium out of the smoke and fill that in It'll take aluminum out of the pots or pans that you're eating or if you're using antiperspirants at home. So it's going to grab on to that aluminum. So we want to make sure that there's a sufficient amount of zinc in your body so that you're not getting this heavy metal toxicity because your body really goes into survival mode and when it's in this survival mode it wants to just fill in the depleted stores of metal from wherever it can. Now. High copper can make it difficult to raise high iron levels, including your ferritin. Vitamin C, which is known to help lower high levels of copper uh, by detoxifying, but patients report that they need to, to low and slow the, the tolerate um, detoxification. So zinc is used for that. And if we don't have enough zinc, then that's going to be a major problem. Now, in summary, if there's a family history of infertility, of mental illness, 
not metal illness, uh, cancer, heart disease, and MTHFR may be the problem there. So we want to know, this is a simple test, it generally costs about $100 to $150, and if we know right off the bat that there is a defective gene, then we know where we can start with treatment protocols and so we don't have to be chasing our tail around uh, trying different types of remedies and therapies that aren't going to be working. So first and foremost what we want to do is a blood test and testing for this MTHFR gene is done through a blood test. So if you have any further questions please don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, you can reach us at area code 802-230-4678 you can also reach us via email at info at gethealthyvermont.com or you can visit our website www.gethealthyvermont.com. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.